guys? Today I am kicking it with artists Raina Noriega <laughs> and Pepper. Raina, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling really good. Thank you for coming here. Oh, listen, we have a lot to talk about your endeavors as an artist, but before we even get into the specifics, how did your passion for art even start? It started a long time ago. Um, my dad's an artist, mm -hmm. and to me, it was just cool. Like, it was just cool. I wanted a sketchbook. Um, I wanted crayons, I wanted anything with colors that I could use. I wasn't good at it or anything. Um, I didn't find out that like I had a talent for it until many years later. Mm -hmm. But I just always wanted to be like my dad, carrying around a sketchbook. Growing up in kindergarten or first grade, everyone's drawing stick figures. So I imagine what your characters are like three dimensional. No, no, no they were terrible. <laughs> really? My mom has um, this portrait I did. I think in like the fourth grade. And like my head was like this big and then my neck was like this big and it's like I guess it's true to life because my head is that big but <laughs> do you keep all your artwork from over the years I don't I would really like to just throw everything from like five years ago away my mom keeps everything that's great what was it like growing up um really good I mean I grew up with both my parents all my siblings um, Cuban, Bahamian household, so lots of food, lots of music. Um, both of my parents are like super creative. My mom was a model makeup artist and then she went into teaching. My dad was a graphic designer, baseball player. So they all kind of lived that entrepreneur lifestyle um, that was like not traditional. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess it kind of rubbed off on me. When did you decide to take art seriously? I. When I wanted to study visual art in college, mm -hmm. I chickened out. I ended up studying psychology and minoring in art and English. And then I just felt like I'll learn cool stuff and I can keep like doing it as a hobby. But when I graduated, um, an art teaching position kind of like fell into my lap. Mm -hmm. um, I had been a substitute teacher for like two years and their art teacher quit the week before school started. And it just kind of like forced me to trust myself more and like mm -hmm. just be more not create and, and compare myself to like people on the internet that were creating right but just kind of create for enjoyment and sharing it with my students that were like actually learning and enjoying it at the same time but you said that you chickened out why did you chicken out did you not believe in your craft at that time yeah i didn't believe that i could make money mm -hmm. um with art i felt like it would be like too hard I, mm -hmm. to me i thought like psychology was more practical and then it turned out mm -hmm. that i never used that degree. Who is supporting you through all this? I keep saying, hearing you say your mom. Would you say like she's your biggest fan? Oh, definitely. Yeah. When I quit um, teaching, mm -hmm. I didn't plan to go straight into freelance. And she was like, "What are you doing? I thought that you were gonna like work on starting a studio." And uh -huh. I was like, "Mom, I can't start a studio. I don't, <laughs> I don't have any money yet. Like, <laughs> that comes later." And she was like, "I don't know. I don't know if you should be working for somebody else. Like that's the point of quitting." And I was like. Do you feel like it was a big step in making that, that conscious decision, like, okay, let me turn this into a business. I'm no longer just going to do this for fun and for leisure. Was that, like, something you were considering that was huge in your life, Kivu? Um, I don't even think I put so much emphasis on it. I think that, like, in the moment, I was focused on doing things better. Like, I used to freelance while I was teaching, and then because I was just, like, extra money, I'll spend it on food, on shopping, and not like mm -hmm. think about it. And as I started thinking, like, okay, if I want to transition out of this and make it a career, mm -hmm. I need to start like saving money. So a current theme is your artwork are these like fly black female figures. Why did you decide to consistently put that out there? As women of color, as specifically black women, a lot of times we are oppressed, a lot of times we have a lot of trauma, yeah. but we have enough reminders of that. Like I wanted to be the color and the vibrance and like remind people of our confidence and our yes. endurance and like all of the beautiful things. Mm -hmm. um, and just make art that could be in, in galleries. And mm -hmm. like a black woman walking to a gallery can see a version of herself and not just like, have to enjoy everyone else's mm -hmm. culture and you know yeah and I'm actually glad you said that because I feel like there's a lot of black young girls who want to do what you're doing what's something that you would say to them I would say always focus inward I, that's the key to everything it's just like focusing all of your energy into getting to know who you are uh -huh. what you like um, bigger than like 
the ego telling you that you need this to be somebody mm -hmm. like you don't need to be a world renowned artist artist to be somebody but you need to be in touch with your soul and i yeah, think yeah. that that trickles out and that will make whatever you choose to do successful because where has your art been displayed so far um so i've done a couple shows over the years what was your first show like? Were you like, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> were you nervous? It was I mean, that's why I haven't painted. I, I started painting this year for the first time in like four years because that, more than four years, like six years, that experience was traumatizing. At the time, I wanted to be an artist, wanted to be an artist. I didn't have a style, I didn't have a focus. And all of my friends were like doing really well and like hyping me up that like, yo, you should do this show with us. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I could put together a couple pieces. No, it was a nightmare. I hated it. Like I spent the whole night just hating it and looking at everybody else's stuff. Like, why did I do this? Mm -hmm. It hurt your confidence. It just—it was very stressful. Mm -hmm. You know how they say like sometimes if you like something and you make it a job, it becomes stressful. Yeah. I didn't feel that way with like photography or graphic design, but when I painted and like I was rushing to get those paintings done, mm -hmm. it felt like my soul was like drained. Typically, how long does it take for you to complete a masterpiece? Um, quite a few hours. I would say like hours, not days. No. Well, wow. I mean, I will go back to it. You know, like I'll spend two or three hours on it a day, and then go back to it another day, just uh -huh. because staring at it for too long, it gets to the point where I'm just like, you can't see it anymore. You've been staring at it for mm -hmm. so long. It's just like. But walk me through the mindset. Okay, so you say it's a Saturday morning. You just woke up. How do you know like what subject it is that you're going to paint? Like, where do you get your creative ideas from? It usually goes with my mood, what I'm feeling, um, and it's like a response to what I'm feeling. So if I'm feeling good and happy and super confident, it'll come from my present moment. If I'm not feeling my best, it'll come from a need to like get back to uh -huh. a moment of just like happiness and like bliss. And I'm sure everyone gets to see your success on Instagram, like these beautiful figures in paintings but you wouldn't have got there without some type of struggle what are some struggles that you may have endured either early on or maybe now um well a lot of discipline a lot of things that like habits that i had to teach myself um because i don't have a backup plan i don't have a salary to fall on to like i have to worry about staying creative doing things for me, also taking on clients, also making sure those clients are happy and getting their work on time. A key word that you said that you used was discipline. What are some things that you have sacrificed in order to up your game and just reach the level that you've reached? Like maybe not going out as much. Like what are some things that you've sacrificed? Definitely. Um, that was one of the biggest lessons I learned was like the power of saying no. Mm -hmm. um, it started off saying no to just like certain events and going out I have a lot of creative friends so it's like any given weekend there can be like three four or five events that I used to feel pressured that like if uh -huh. I'm not there if I'm not supporting I'm a bad friend and it just got to the point where first when I was like living in Homestead it was a burden it was yeah. like driving here for an hour to go somewhere and then driving back tired yeah. And it got to the point where I would like doze off driving and I was like, that's it. Like, mm -hmm. if I don't feel like going out, I'm not going out. So that kind of stuck with me when I got here. I felt the power of just like, if I don't need to be there, there's no reason for me to be there. A lot of times we say like networking and something that I had to learn myself was there's really no point in like networking and gathering all these con contacts if mm -hmm. like you haven't put in the work at home to develop projects that when you meet this person, that's like, you're ready you're the prepared. art director of mm -hmm. this magazine like you have something to show them like mm -hmm. if all you're doing is going to events and hoarding contacts and not giving yourself time to develop anything it's like for what you were dropping gyms <laughs> <laughs> and you don't you don't like you know like you're not you can't really do much with it so yeah. that was something um recently it's even gotten to the point where like i've isolated myself mm -hmm. but then that i have to balance with like keeping in touch with friends and like being able to say like mm -hmm. yo i need someone to come over because i'm gonna lose my mind but then also like it's okay if i spend seven days in the week by myself i'm like building something right now you're very creative you don't limit yourself to just canvas i see that you have stickers and you also like speak things into existence with your manifestations i see that you want to design album covers and 
wine labels. Why do you think outside of the box like that? I don't know. It's always been something that I personally like. Like anytime I see something, like if I see a really cool cushion, mm -hmm. which this is next, that's why I'm like a cushion. <laughs> I really want to make a cushion. Um, and it has a cool pattern on it. I'm uh -huh. like, okay, what if I made that pattern? Like what would that look like? If I don't see what I want in the world, mm -hmm. um, then I want to put it there. So outside of art, you also have interest in writing as an author and you're also an activist. And I want to focus on being an author. So far, how many books have you written so far? Written a lot. Yeah? I've written like five. I've only published um, one and I'm working on the second one. What are they about? Um, so the first one I published was a collection of poems about falling in love and like what that journey looks like and what it does to you as a person. Uh -huh. um, the second one I'm publishing is kind of like a continuation, but you see the focus shift from like relationships and love to just focusing totally on like finding and reaching your higher self. Now you're also an activist. What are some issues that you take the stand for? Um, so recently I've gotten involved in just like becoming more conscious first for myself because I think before we can speak on things, we have to educate ourselves. And I came from a lot of just like privilege where I didn't have to think about certain things. I love being a part of something that can um, bring about change mm -hmm. and also like highlighting people who are doing the work and using our platforms. Like it, it educates people who also have the privilege of not thinking about certain things because a lot of times like once you're educated about something it seems common sense mm -hmm. but when you're like farther away from it and yeah. you're just like you're still at that point of privilege where you don't know anyone trans you haven't experienced anyone being murdered you're mm -hmm. just kind of like those people are weird why do they act like that yeah. and you let your own biases consume you right and you can just turn a blind eye as things go wrong like, we mm -hmm. have to think on the level of like humanity and what's fair as humans like, so you're well versed in Several things are writing, you're an advocate. What's your ultimate goal? I feel like I'm so focused on day to day just growing and expanding in some way mm -hmm. that I don't focus so much on like reaching a certain thing. Like, there's mm -hmm. definitely, I've been setting smaller goals and I've been seeing them come into fruition like mm -hmm. like you're saying the things that I, you see me manifest online like I, I i managed to pull through with like i've always wanted to do earrings uh -huh. i'm working on some earrings they're coming out soon um i've always wanted to do wrapping paper i uh -huh. partnered with a company and i'm going to do some wrapping paper and it'll be women of color and you know uh -huh. i don't even know what i'm gonna want two years from now because mm -hmm. it's just like things are moving quickly like as mm -hmm. I, I i've learned how to make my dreams come true, uh -huh. you know, and it's not like an accident, it's kind mm -hmm. of like when you are super clear on what you want and you can write it down, which is like bigger. I don't even do vision boards anymore because it's, it's bigger than that. It's kind of like being clear on what you want, being able to like make sure you're prepared for it. So mm -hmm. not just saying like, I really want this person to mm -hmm. recognize my art or like I really want this gallery to reach out mm -hmm. with me. It's kind of like seeing that, okay, I want my work in a gallery. In the meantime, that means that I need to make quality work for the gallery. The steps that you need to take. I need to make connections for people who know galleries. Mm -hmm. I need to make myself like respected in that sense. And then like, it comes. And how far are you, of how far you come? You're not drawing stick figures anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, super proud, super proud. Sometimes I'm just like, damn. Like even when it's super hard, I'm like, damn. But like, look at what my struggle is. You know, my struggle is the struggle that I thought would be a dream, you know, mm -hmm. like working for myself. Like, yes, it's hard and I'm crying and I'm mad, but like I'm mad because I have to figure this thing out, but I'm so close to mm -hmm. figuring it out. It's worth it though, right? It's definitely worth it. I want to thank you for this interview. I'm so glad I got to meet Pep. <laughs> Look at her. She's a baby. You are so talented and thank I can't you. wait to see where art, your writing, being an advocate where you end up. Thank you so much.